Thanks for joining our Tech Talk. I'm joined here today with Metri Chobi, who's going to be talking to us about the Developer Console. Metri, to get us started, why don't you just tell us about the Developer Console, what you do, uh, and some of the things that your team's working on right now. So I'm Senior Product Manager at Alexa uh, Skills Kit, and my area of ownership is mostly around developer toolings. I primarily work on developer console and any productivity improvements we can do to make our developers' life easier. And uh, so in December, we launched a new Create skill flow. That's something I would like to talk about at this TikTok. Awesome. Yeah, the Create skill flow looks so good now. I'm sure some of you have noticed the changes now. Um, but before we uh, get into those, do you want to talk a little bit about why that's what you updated most recently? Why that's been the focus of the team? Yeah, so our team actually monitors developer feedback through various channels. And one thing we observed is through like various surveys and anecdotal feedback, the developers find it difficult to make a choice between which model they should choose for their experience. And the prior to the new create skill flow, we did not provide enough information on our console. So you get an overwhelming amount of information. Okay, there are like seven, eight models, but which one to choose? It's very difficult to make that choice. In addition to that, the hosting options we have also was creating a lot of confusion. Developers didn't know if choosing a hosted skill is a one payroll decision. So we also provided information on that in the new create skill flow. So we're trying to provide That's, enough information that can help developers make an informed decision. That is so interesting. And that sounds like some really fascinating data that informed that improvement. How are you collecting that? So we rely on various sources, the contact us form, the forums, user, uh, user voice and the feedback widget on console. So we look at all the sources of feedback and we also perform user researches and surveys to get additional and total feedback to back our hypothesis on the improvements. Awesome. So what was the old experience like? It didn't talk about how to choose a skill type or anything? Yeah. So when you create a, create a skill, you would get a list of pre-built models and hosting mm -hmm. options but it did not provide which one should a developer use for a particular kind of experience they're trying to build. Also, it did not provide enough information on what you're getting out of the pre-built models, how heavy lift it is. So for example, if we look at kits, we provide enough, uh, it's a low code experience. So you get the API you can integrate with and you don't have to build things from scratch, which is the case for custom model. But that was not clear in the old create skill flow. With the new flow, we are trying to provide that information and also be transparent about the limitations that's, that comes with any of these skills kit. When you say kit, um, can you talk a little bit, what's the difference between starting from scratch, using a kit, uh, templates, skill code, all those different things that get kind of confusing when you've got them all in the same yeah. context? Yeah, so we provide pre-built voice models like music, video where we provide you the API you can integrate with and you get a defined CX. You, we do majority of the work and you can just integrate your services to it and you can get those interactions out of the box. But for custom, you get a set limited set of pre-built models, but you have to build your skill from scratch. So you own the CX, you define everything. So that's like a heavy lift when compared to low code solutions like kits. Just hearing what you're talking about now, the old experience to the new experience, there have been some pretty significant changes. Um, if you have uh, the, the new experience, I think this would be a great time to take a look at that. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me walk you through the new experience. So now when you click on Create Skill Flow, we ask you the name to primary locale. And if you see, we have improved. We have created a stepper where you can see all the next steps. So. I provide my skill name, I'm creating a skill for English US. I click on next. Now I have an option to choose the type of experience. So I'm trying to create an audio skill and I click on music and audio. Now I'm presenting with two models as opposed to all the models that are available. So here we are recommending you to use music. If you're creating a skill in music and audio and you have the other option you have is custom. And if we look at this, we provide you an information about what these models offer and then what, what is 
what is the additional attributes you can get from this model. So for example, when you use a music model, you get shuffle, loop, start, pause, search, intents, predefined CX for these intents by default. But for custom, we are giving you very basic built-in intents like cancel, navigate to home, get help, and more. So these would be basically would be applicable to any kind of skill experience. So you can create whatever you want with custom, but with music, you have some predefined CX. We provide you that you, you can customize it if you want, you can add a custom model, but you need to contact us. So earlier this information was not presented and it felt like you cannot add a custom model to music, uh, music model. So this is where we provide more information on what are the limitation, what benefits you get. And then here in custom, you can see what you can do with a custom model. And now if you see the, in earlier model, we used to provide sync locale as the first option to choose, but now we have moved it to below the model because it's impacted by the model you're choosing. So when you select custom, that's when you get sync locale because it's applicable only for custom skills. Got it. And what does that do? So sync locale basically syncs all your skill across all the locales for that same language. So if I'm creating a skill in English US, it would sync my interaction model to all the all the English locales. So English UK, okay. English UK, sorry, English GB. And you'll get that skill distributed to all the, all those locales. This is so much more transparent. There's so much more information than the old skill experience. Um, I yeah. think uh, some of our viewers, I'm sure you've you've uh, built a skill prior to this change. I mean, I know when I built my first skill, having this much information up front would have been super, super helpful, especially choosing a model to go off of. Yeah, and we are not blocking you from viewing other models. You can always browse the remaining models and you can get all the information about it. So. If you choose a wrong experience type and you want to see other models to see if they align with your experience, you can always browse them. In addition to providing details about the voice model, we also provided additional details about our hosting services. So for example, if you choose a Alexa hosted skill, uh, what kind of limitations we have, what, how many GB S3 storage you're getting out of the box, what happens if you exceed your usage limits? So this is where we explain that it's not a one-way door decision that if you exceed your usage limit, you have to create a new skill. You can use your own AWS account and integrate it with your Alexa hosted skill. So this was one of the area where we had a lot of confusion and we tried to clarify that with this new create skill flow. So now if you choose music and audio and go to next. The other thing we did was filter out the templates for your experience. So you don't see all the templates, but you have an option to view other templates. So for example, if you wanted to create a fact, so you have these templates you can choose from, and these are more like sample codes to get you started and help you uh, get something from, uh, instead of building from scratch, get some code to start with. And we also have an import skill, which could help you import from the GitHub repository that's maintained by Alexa community. Okay, so if you move on to next page, we added a review page. So this basically helps you review what choices you have made and also flags what is one way door decision. So for example, when you choose a model and click on create skill button, that model cannot be changed later. So we provide you that the hosting region and the model that you have chosen is like one way door decision. So if you wanna change it, you can go back and edit it from here. If you want to choose a music model and then click next and you'll get that model and you can create your skill. So this Great. provides a place where you can review your choices. When you say one way door, you just mean like once we hit create, that's it. If we wanted to change yes. that, we'd have to start a new skill again. Yes, yes. Got it. Okay, so now that you land on the build page, you can see all the resources categorized by the life cycle stage. So you have design guide, you can use it to create an engaging visual and audio responses for your skill. You can use build uh, resources for creating your skill. Uh, you have APL documentations and how you can monetize your skill as well. We also provide testing instructions, uh, testing and debugging your, for your skill. And then we added certification requirements here so that you can review them when you're creating your skill and make sure your skill complies with the skill guideline. 
This will be so added be helpful. Yeah. Did we have any of these links in the old experience? We had these links, but it was there was a lot of information and it was not categorized. There was like some stale information. So we updated it and we are committed to like ref keep refreshing our content to keep it fresh and not have stale information here. Um, and we are also looking into other areas where we can provide more information that could help skill builders to get like troubleshooting guidance when they're creating their skill. This is awesome. So, um, so this was the create skill experience. Now we're in the developer console. What's the next big thing for your team? Where do you see the most opportunity as you're thinking about how to improve this tool for developers? So we are looking into improving the experience throughout the skill uh, building life cycle. We are looking at how we can improve the productivity during the build phase, how we can provide more debugging tools and testing features. We are also looking at specifically for certification, how we can reduce the certification friction, because that seems to be one of the key area where we see some friction. So we are looking into making in-tool updates to provide better information and validations that can help skill builders identify those issues prior to submission. Got it. Interesting. So can you talk about the productivity side of things a little bit? Like, what do you mean? That seems very internally uh, framed. I'm just thinking as a developer, how, how will you help me be more productive? That sounds really cool. Yes. So basically, we want to make sure that our navigation throughout the console is aligning with the mental model of our developers. Uh, we are improving the discovery of features so you can find the features in fewer clicks. We are also looking into improving the debugging information which we provide. So for example, if your build fails, how can we improve that to help you debug it faster and provide you enough information to make changes and fix your skill? Sim similarly, for certification, we want to provide you information prior uh, to submission and not wait when your skill is submitted and you get those failures. Mm -hmm. Got it. That is so interesting. Um, now, I know your team also works in the CLI, right? Yes. Are any of these improvements uh, that you're considering going to tie back to the CLI at all? I know a lot of our developers use that as they get more experienced. Yeah, we are actually looking into uh, parallelizing these efforts and not just limiting ourselves to console. We are looking at improvements we can make across tools that would help uh, lowering the barrier which skill builders face today for uh, publishing a skill. Okay, now if our viewers are interested in talking to you more about this or giving you their ideas, how can they get in touch with you? They can always uh, Slack me on a Alexa Community Slack channel. I'm over there and I'm happy to hear your feedback. Awesome, that's so great to hear. Now you also collect feedback through the Developer Console widget, right, through your team? Yes, so we okay. are uh, invested in making sure that the, the, the feedback widget we have on the console is um, more easy to use and we are committed to improving that experience and also how we can get better feedback. Uh, but I would encourage our developers to use that widget to provide in-context feedback. That would be really helpful for us to make more improvements. We can tell what page someone is on when they submit their feedback, right? That's how we know yes. the yes. context. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so our teams are looking at those. They are very helpful. Um, we have a UX team who also is regular, regularly reviewing those things. So definitely let us know what you don't like and what you do like about our pages so that we can um, incorporate that feedback to the changes that Metri's team is making. So of all these changes that you're talking about, what are you most excited for? Uh, what's your favorite thing that you've done already? Uh, just want to hear from you. I think I really like the way we added side by side comparison in the create skill flow that actually provides a lot of value in comparing two models and making a choice, then looking at like eight models with limited information. So that's something I feel like should be very helpful for developers to make a choice. Yeah, I think that for our beginners, people just starting out on the skill building journey, I mean, having that comparison chart, being able to see like, this is why I choose this. This is why I choose that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Like that, that's invaluable. Yeah, I was just saying that we are looking to also improve like how the getting started experience could be for the new skill builders so that we can provide more information and onboarding guidance for someone who's creating their first skill versus experienced skill builders. 
Great. We've gotten a lot of feedback specifically from beginners on that same kind of front. Yeah. So yeah, definitely makes sense. All right. Well, it's been absolutely lovely talking to you today, Mashri. I think that these changes are really, really exciting. Um, hopefully, uh, you all think so, too. If not, <laughs> let us know why. <laughs> and uh, with that, um, please do let us know in the survey uh, what you think about our tech talks, how we can improve. Um, and you heard her. She's ready for your feedback in Slack. Let's send in those anecdotes, flood her inbox. Um, we don't know when we'll get to talk to her next. So thank you so much, everyone. Hope you enjoy this show. Have a wonderful day. Bye.